giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. These are our five runners up. Uh, runners up are based on the total points from the judging rubric. Uh, and each of the finalist teams that will cover in the next few minutes will receive $500. So Mark will get us started with eighth place. Yeah, so in eighth place, so for the $500 prize, we have, do, 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 we have FTC 17801, seven machines. So they built the Cargo Plus uh, robot, which is an automated hos hospital waste disposal robot. So I really liked uh, how they approached the COVID-19 problem here. Um, they, they did some research and they found out that experts were actually uh, saying that one of the biggest problems with COVID-19 was waste disposal. Uh, it, it certainly makes sense. We're using more medical equipment than we ever have. And uh, that, you know, may have been exposed to COVID, so it needs to be disposed of properly. So a really great kind of problem statement of just getting getting rid of all the trash as it's being generated. And uh, the robot has a, you know, very simple but effective mechanism to it, which, you know, goes down, it grabs, uh, you know, a bin from both sides, uh, and that top part can slide up and down. It's got two linear slides, and then it can go forward and back. So uh, it also just kind of very much looks like it should be in a hospital. It looks like what a hospital robot, I think, would look like. Um, so really great job there. And you can see the detail uh, in the model as well. They did a great job on the pulley system. Uh, that's really detailed. They included a panel. Uh, I know that doesn't sound like that cool, but it shows that they thought about not only, you know, what the robot should look like outwardly, but how would you service a robot, right? You're going to probably have to get into that system panel pretty often to, you know, change batteries or do something um, for service. So I, I love it that they like included details like that into their design process. So overall, like a really great robot, you know, definitely deserving of this number eight spot here. So congratulations to 17801. Thanks, Mark. On to seventh place, Johnny. Great. Well, um, for the seventh place, this is a team uh, that we've seen before, actually, as part of something uh, in terms of uh, amazing alliances. And this team uh, did a very interesting robot. And if we go ahead and, and click on the next slide, you'll see that it is the team Persevere. Uh, the robot's name is Persevere from team number 5962. And as uh, Mark had previously said about a system, it's a um, the system robots to receive uh, grocery orders, collect them, and deliver them uh, directly to customers' cars, uh, reducing the, the amount of human interaction. And, and this robot, from a couple of standpoints, we thought was, were quite interesting. First of all, just it, it's something that you might actually expect to see in, in kind of a warehouse or, or factory going to pick something up. Um, they built it with, with some you know, incredibly strong sort of structural elements, if you will, in terms of using a chain, chain drive and the pulley, uh, but also using suction cups to be able to grab things that might be, you know, that, that require a little bit um, more uh, uh, sensitivity, if you will, if they're grabbing fruit or things that might, might crush. So it's a robot that works with the system. We saw it in the context of the amazing alliances, but Team Persevere did an amazing job uh, building a, a, a great robot and one that uh, we could actually expect to see uh, sometime in the future. So congratulations. Thanks, Johnny. Sixth place. Dave, you want to tell us about our sixth place finalist? You're muted, Dave. <laughs> there we go. Our sixth place finalist um, is a great is a great uh, example of design. Um, uh, if we uh, if we can forward to the next slide, it's the uh, I'm not sure how to say it. I think it's Bayites uh, <laughs> FTC um, 086. This is a design uh, um, from Romania uh, that we're very excited about. The Costica again pronunciation may be wrong, but <laughs> Costica uh, 3.1 robot. And it's a firefighting robot that enters high-risk situations um, uh, to protect firefighters. Um, it happens to be the case that two of the parents of, of two of the uh, uh, students who developed this robot are firefighters. So this is a personal situation to them. Um, if you look at it, uh, it's really a heavy-duty robot, uh, beautiful design. Actually, I love the uh, the coloring, too. It's... it's uh, it's fire engine red, which is great. Um, it has, you know, it will bring in, as you can see, it will bring in uh, 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 the heavy duty hose 
and has a cannon for directing the water stream. Um, it, it has a cup for clearing the road. Uh, it has uh, 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 different um, diameter um, nozzles for dispersion. Uh, it's, there really has been a lot of thought about uh, uh, how to make it controllable, how to get it into, it's a relatively small robot, but very powerful. So it can drag that heavy hose, which is, which is even heavier with, because of all the water uh, that, that's attached to it. For anybody who sort of you know, has dealt with hoses before, it's, uh, it's quite, a, uh, it's quite, a, it, it's quite a, uh, a, a manual effort uh, for, for firefighters. And so you have to have something which is very strong. Um, and this robot, I think, is really, uh, really, really creative. Um, it was a great team. There are actually a number of robots that solve this kind of problem. I think there were at least three in the competition, which I found fascinating too, that this came up independently three different times. Uh, but I think that this robot is really a, really a beautiful job and uh, um, is really an impressive, an, an impressive feat. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. On to our fifth place, Robot McKenzie. Great. Um, so for fifth place, we have um, FRCT number 2067, Apple Pie. Um, so this robot was the robot they built for the Evergreen Elder Care to assist the retirement communities by delivering medication, groceries, and completing other medical tasks. And so some of you may remember a little while ago, I mentioned um, Team 2067 as the ninth place winner as well. So this is actually the only team that submitted two robots to us. Um, and both of them actually did really well. This team really... Um, did a great job with both of their submissions. They'd emailed us the day of saying, actually, we, we went and tried to learn more. We wanted to do two submissions. We wanted to make two robots just to go above and beyond and let more of our team learn. And so we thought that was really cool. So we had our judges look at both robots, and then this one ended up um, as a fifth place robot. And so if we look at the next page, we can actually see some of the details of why um, this one placed so highly. So they did some incredible modeling with this. You can see with that basket, um, they did some pretty complex designs there. They had a very detailed model that incorporated a lot of the elements they'd need. Um, it, it really thought about a lot of the aspects that you would need in a retirement home and what you would need to fulfill by having some of the medication and the laptop holder and so many other things incorporated on this one cart to be able to drive around the um, retirement facility. And in addition to making this robot, they didn't just you know, kind of come up with a design on their own. They actually reached out to a local business. So they reached out to that Evergreen Woods um, that you can see in that bottom right to actually see what they need. And so in their um, documentation, they actually included a video that was the path the robot would need to take through the facility. So someone had actually walked through the facility and done the walkthrough to see what that robot would need to do and really thought through that design before just making the robot. So it's pretty cool that they had taken that care to actually reach out to a local business and figure out what they would need. And then you can also see something that was pretty unique about this design was um, on that top piece right there, you see those six little um, circular pieces coming out. So there are actually some pneumatic elevator button pushers. So we thought that was definitely a unique way to solve that design of having to go in the elevator. I know when we go back into our office, a lot of us have been kind of nervous about, Ugh, we don't really want to be touching those buttons right now. So that was just another neat aspect that they had included when they did this design. So they had a lot of really great all around things with their design. Great. Congratulations, Apple Pie. Uh, on to fourth place, Mark. Yeah, and in fourth place, we have FTC 8221 Cubics with the can -Do robot. So that stands for Contactless Automated Nursing Delivery and Observation Robot. So maybe at first glance, this robot doesn't look too impressive, but as soon as you start to see it move, uh, I think you see that, you know, how much time was actually spent on this robot. Um, I mean, this animation is so cool. I could watch this all day. Uh, <laughs> the team did such an amazing job there. I'm actually selling them short. They had other videos too that we, we don't have in this presentation, but I mean, you could just sit here and watch that all, all day. So cool. Um, it, but beyond just like a flashy video, it's it's also just like a really practical robot, and which is what I really love. So the team actually talked to nurses uh, at their local hospital and and at a nursing home to find out what what are some of the problems due to due to COVID, and uh, they got some great feedback. So like an example is that iPad that's being shown. 
uh, actually for a patient to FaceTime with their family, which obviously is important to them, uh, the nurse has to hold that iPad. And that's like a problem. It takes up time of the nurses. Obviously, the patients can't do it as often. So they made sure to include that in their design. And they actually went so far as to make sure there's like little rubber stoppers in there so that the iPad doesn't fall out as it's moving up and down. Um, so really great job there. Um, in addition to that, you know, it's it's got some really good design. So it has a quadruple linear slide for, for the main part of the table. Now, linear slides can be kind of like flat. They can flex and kind of be weak and might not be good for a table, but they're opposing each other. And they're set up in such a way that it really does look like a really sturdy base. So I think they did an excellent job there. Um, and then, you know, Tyler, if you go for one slide, I've got a cutaway. And there's, they just packed so much into that tiny little base. And I love that it, it comes down and folds up because that, that means the center of gravity be, will be really low when it's actually moving around. So, I mean, just great design. Uh, I mean, awesome video and, you know, all, good research um, all around one of the, the best kind of submissions that we got and, and absolutely deserving of our number four spot. So congratulations to this team. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, in case, in case you couldn't tell, Mark was pretty excited about this robot. <laughs> Great uh, review and just so cool to see all of the different uh, work that's been done. It's interesting, you know, there's so many different facets of product design and creation. And, you know, you think about documentation, branding, uh, user research, just how those these are all represented across the different 151 submissions. Uh, again, super impressive. So congratulations to our finalists. The Robots to the Rescue Challenge on First Updates Now is brought to you by PTC. Don't forget that you can register for Onshape for free and start designing right in your browser at onshape.com forward slash education dash plan.